Oh, we had to think of something funny to say in the, the beginning. You know none of that stuff's actually funny, right? Oh. Well, hello there, parapeeps, and welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels. Let's talk paranormal live. I am your host, Sean Donnelly. I'm your co-host, Mary Ann Donnelly. Yeah, I know. None of them are funny, but what are you going to do? You know, maybe somebody will find it interesting. Nobody gets our humor anyway. Nobody gets it. (laughs) Nobody gets it. Well, hello, 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 everybody. I hope you're having a great Saturday evening. We are kind of slow today. Well, this morning was a little busy. Yeah, busy this morning, but we kind of relaxed this afternoon. When did you find out this morning? What made you think to look and see? Well... Like, yeah, this morning I get up and I'm getting my cup of coffee and Marianne's like, are you awake yet? And I'm like, yeah, kind of. She goes, well, we got to go get tags for your car. They expired. Oops. Yeah. Well, my dad mentioned last week or something like that, that he had to get his. And I thought ours was like a couple weeks after his, but uh, apparently it's the same time. So <laughs> we were like five days late. It's okay. All right. Well, we were running around with expired <laughs> plates, but it's all we good now. We could have been like, "Wait, what? My birthday's in August, right?" It's all good now, I guess. <laughs> all right. So, hey, while we're getting things going here, if you are joining us already in chat, which some of you are, because you picked the background for tonight. That's See, right. I got red over here and purple over there. Mm-hmm. Um, go ahead and let us know where you are from. Right, so I do know that somebody said they were from Ireland. Yeah, that's paranormal tech. Yeah. Paranormal tech from Ireland. That's pretty cool. Hello from across the pond. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So what uh, what did you do today? Besides, you know, go get the plates. What did I do today? Mm-hmm. You were here with me. I know. Oh, you want but me to I share didn't. with them what I did? Okay. Oh, you yeah. were kind of like zoning out. Well, I watched a couple movies, and I was working on a video. Actually, I was working on a video till late last night, and I'm really excited about it. I'll tell you guys about that here in a little bit. Um, and uh, I was watching a couple movies today and kicking around some ideas. we got some more uh, videos we got to do for next week. Next week's going to be pretty interesting location we're covering. And... Uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Besides going to get the plates and dealing with all that stuff. And <laughs> a couple phone calls and yeah. All right, so tonight's show is brought to you by Crash Palace, 12 Night Horror, author Ellie, and of course our Patreon supporter, BU Be Unique. And how can you become a show supporter? Well, you can become a show supporter by following us on Twitter, liking, retweeting, and commenting as many posts as possible throughout the week. Be in the top three and be a supporter. Or you can be a $5 a month or more Patreon supporter. And yeah, and we will feature you every week. That's right. Okay, so we see, I see some people starting to pop in. It might be kind of slow. There, I know there's a lot of uh, interesting live streams going on right now, really? right at the same time. Ooh. Some within the paranormal realm, so that we might not get everybody in here. But that's okay, because I'm kind of excited to talk about today's show a little bit. You have no idea what today's topic is. Well, I kind of do. It was, based on, do. it was based on our video this week. That's right. Um, <laughs> the video that we put out on uh, Thursday was kind of like a, I don't know, like do we do it, do we don't do it, that type of thing. And I fought with editing and trying to clean it down and or, you know, clean it up and all that stuff. And it, uh, we got some awesome comments on on that video, so that's what I want to talk about is, okay. is those comments and then talk to our para peeps, our go. community here, mm-hmm. those who watch our videos and see if they would like more of that kind of All stuff. Right. Um, kind of give behind the scenes how we do research and things like that. So, yeah, so All right. that's what we're talking about. 
All right, so would you guys? Oh, Kit Kat Games and Beauty. Thank you very much for the super oh, chat. Sorry, you. I cannot stay long, but hope you have a wonderful Saturday. We wish you a very yes. wonderful Saturday as well. Yes, and thank you, thank you. Uh, I want to get this other screen up. Okay, I'm just saying hello to a few of the pair of peeps who have joined in the chat. Well, you can actually do the roll call if you want. I'm going to do the roll I call. I can? Is sure. it time for that already? Sure. Let's go ahead. Oh, wait. Were you going to let wait, Boris wait. play for Yeah. I, okay. I forgot. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Boris All right. So we got play. 10 in here. Let's see if we can get 20. All right. Let's see if we can get 20. Here we go. Boris wants to help out. So here. He earns his keep for another week. He earns his keep. He don't <laughs> eat much, but. <laughs> Where were we at today? We heard uh, a, the joke about the skeleton. No, I was watching. I was watching uh, old David Letterman YouTube clips, and um, Al Pacino was on there. Okay. Yeah. So you guys want to hear the joke? If you want to hear the joke that she's talking about, leave a number one in chat, and I'll tell you the joke. <laughs> If you want to hear a joke. If not, eh, we'll just bypass it. All right. Uh, what was I looking for next? I don't remember. I don't know. Hey, Richard's in the house. I haven't seen Richard. Hello. Well, he was the one that picked one of the colors up there. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're getting ones. All right. So here's the joke. This is what Al Pacino told Dave Letterman. He goes, a skeleton walked into the bar and went to the bartender and said, give me a beer and a mop. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's, people are going, well, that's not funny. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's hilarious. He goes in. He doesn't have anything to hold in. It just drips on the floor. He wants to clean up after himself. Give me a beer and a mop. And a mop. I think Kit Kat Games may have caught that. She's got a happy laughing kind of <laughs> face on here. So I think she got it. Oh, oh, oh that's funny. All right. So now you can do the roll call. We, although we've lost some viewers, but that's okay. <laughs> We're just hanging out tonight, guys. I want to talk about that video we put out Thursday. And, and we'll, we'll call this a, a pair of peeps board meeting tonight. Ooh, a board Yeah, that's why I should have tired. You know, you guys are our, our viewers and our, our audience. And we I want your feedback. And if you like what we're doing, we could we could do more of it. If you don't like what we're doing, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so our participants tonight so far are Buzzard33, Desmond's Donders, Urban DePaid Tourist, In the Woods with Wolfie, Kay Johnston, Kit Kat Games and Beauty, Paranormal Tech, Teresa Gregory, Timey Lives, and Annette Reagan. I don't know if we should say who we are. Should we say who we are? Sure, why not? Oh, and ATJH Travels has just joined and says hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for coming and joining and playing with us tonight. We only go live once a week, and it's fun to, to do it. I love when you guys come by. So, hey, a little bit. Why don't you tell them who we are? No. No. <laughs> All right. Like in the beginning, when we said, Sean, Mary, and Donnelly, owners of PanicD.com and DarkShadowGhostTours.com. PanicD.com is a database of over 800 different locations across the United States that have paranormal claims. I need to check that number because it's probably more. I don't know. Anyways, Our Haunted Travels, which is a series that we're doing on our channel, 
features over 200 locations. And I keep saying over 200 because I don't have an exact number since I have to update that list. That's right. Okay, over the 200 locations that we've visited out of that database across the United States and U.S. territories because we did go to Puerto Rico. That's right. So each week we feature a new location and we tell you the history, the ghost stories and folklore, our personal experiences, and why we believe the locations are haunted. So if you like that kind of stuff, like history videos and paranormal type videos, if we do an investigation, we find something, when we do an evidence review, and we throw other paranormal and historical type stuff in there. And uh, if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I'm supposed to go ring the bell. Oh, I'm sorry. I was waiting for you to finish so we can uh, answer a question. Okay. Ring the bell, and you'll get notified the next time. We put out a video. So that's who we are. Go ahead, answer the question. ATJH Travels wants to know if anyone's having trouble with uh, videos disappearing on YouTube. Do you, have you heard anything? No. Especially Did on you check Fire. Your... She says, especially on Fire TV. Mm. No, I have not. That's the first I've heard of it. I don't have to go except and check for, our numbers. Except for are they you taking them know. out of your channel? Except for you, you uh, and I think Pusha also said they're only going back like 199 videos or something if you look at the page directly. Well, if like, they're talking like Fire just... TV, that might be like a Fire Stick type thing. And they're, you know, um, I know if you view videos off of the channel on a thing, it only goes back 198. And I know why, but that don't make sense. But the API that shows your videos mm -hmm. only holds 200. Hmm. Yeah, so if you have videos, which we do, we, we have, have all over that. a lot of them, you can't go back and browse to like find videos from before seven months ago right now. So I'm working on that. But as far as disappearing, I haven't gone and checked to see if there's any disappearing. That's That'd be horrible. Yeah, because the whole point of our channel is for cataloging and maintaining that information so one one many channels on the app no new no newer videos was that our channel or somebody else's channel I think okay that might be their channel well it sounds to me like the app is not updating the youtube app on that fire stick is not updating right then maybe try to reset it and see see if that would like go out and re like cache that listing or something okay. like reset your fire stick power it off unplug it if your fire sticks hooked up like our roku sticks we don't have fire stick we got a roku and it pulls the power from the tv just go and unplug that usb from it and let it recycle the power like reset it or there's also options on ours where you can go to settings and say reset device and it'll re like reboot the fire stick I would try that first. When in doubt, reboot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's how I roll has joined us as well. That's so nice how I to roll. see you guys. Hello, hello, hello. All right. Would you, before we get started on tonight's happy trails hiking, says talking hello as topic, well. do you have an eBay update? I do. You have an eBay update. And then we got some stuff we want to discuss with our, with our, uh, what did I say? Our board, our board of directors, yeah. so to speak. Um, so, uh, do yeah. I get a picture this time, or you I'm get just a picture? Going? Yeah, we can give oh, you a okay. picture. Yeah. I gotta come back to that picture. Okay. All right, it's time for Marianne's eBay update. I gotta make that video. <laughs> you gotta re remake that again, yeah. huh? So, in the mail. Just two days ago, I got a package this? from eBay. <sighs> this is the uh, the tape, the uh, the ortho tape plaster bandages to make the light casts. Remember, I said I've Wait, always wanted you, to. You said that plural. I already said I wasn't going to do it. And I already said you are. <laughs> so I got multiple packages. So we can make lots of them. <clears throat> You're gonna look great, baby. Well, we're not doing it tonight. No, so. we're not. But I did get the. But we in the can't mail. do it tonight because Irish whiskey says, "I'm come on to say hi, and I'm going back to my nap." So we what? can't do it tonight. We need a big audience for that. Oh, 
<laughs> but anyways, that is my eBay purchase of the week. You can get as much as you want out there. They have them for all different prices as well. I got I, my six I for... I still don't know whether I'm going to do that. Yeah, you are. I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't Even know. if you do it in your sleep. I don't know. I tell you what, if we get the 3,000 subscribers, if those guys can help us get the 3,000 subscribers, I'll let you do the like mask on me. Yeah, um, no. Uh, no? <laughs> I think that was a pretty good challenge. No, no that's not a good challenge. I, I think I, it is. Nope, mm -mm. Why? No, because be I want this. No. Well, we'll do yours, and then we'll I'd do want... mine at 3,000. I think that's a good deal. What do you guys think? I think that's a good deal. <sighs> I don't know. Francis Urban Spirits is here in the house joining us as well now. So hello there. Nice to see you. I can't believe Irish whiskey would rather nap than see. Well, we just might not uh, be energetic enough to keep him awake. What? No. Yeah. <laughs> I could go crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> But it's Saturday, and I'm relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. Yeah, it's funny. The the guidance counselor at school, I always ha he he's not a like a real morning person either. I mean, he kind of is way better than you. But if he calls me or comes by my room in the morning, I get real excited. And I go, Mister, I don't know what he gets. Like, tone it down. That's tone annoying. It down, make it smaller. <laughs> morning people are annoying to people who are night people. Very much so. Hannah Casto has joined us as well. All right, and so here's says, something to ask, Hey, Miss Bunny Lou is here. <laughs> Bunny Lou, Slender Bunny is Slender in the house. Slender Bunny is in the house. So here's a question for a chat, okay? Here we go. Are you a morning person or are you a night person? I'm interested. I want to see. I'm doing a personality profile of our people in chat right now. <laughs> are you better in the morning or are you better like I am, like after 10 o'clock and about two cups of coffee? What say you? I have worked, and I've said this several times. I don't know if I said it on chat, but I've said several times. I have worked for education, uh, you know, data regional center at the school, different things for. Well, this is my 29th year, and I've had to be at work at seven o'clock, seven thirty plus, high school. I am still not a morning person. I don't like to get up. It's not natural. <laughs> I was up till. 3.30 in the morning last night editing a video and I had to force myself to go to sleep because I was getting a little bit uh, but you know I'm just better in the evening. Mornings and I'm not. I'm better in the mornings. I need uh, by, <sighs> by like 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon I need to get a start a nap on but I during the week I obviously work and, and that but uh, on the weekends that's my like nappy times. So I need around 3 o'clock in the afternoon but uh, evenings, I'm I'm like by seven thirty eight o'clock. I'm I'm ready for napping. All right. So what do we got here? We got we got uh, a morning. Got a morning person. One and Who we said got a, that. Who said morning? So person? Richard said morning. Richard's Desmond a morning person. Desmond Donder says night. Night. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Hannah, Hannah says, can stay up until three in the morning. Well, she's younger though. She's Those a night people, person. They're always able to Hannah, stay up. Is high school hard for you in the mornings, man? It was hard for me. Um, and I don't know that anybody Happy else. Happy Trails responded. is going navigating. Teresa Gregory is back. Got distracted by the little one. <laughs> Got to go prep for dinner. All right. All right. In the woods with Whippy. I don't have a specific time of day. Up early, went up north. And when in town, it's a night shift house. So nighttime and late mornings. So they are sporadic. All right. Okay. So there's so, the bell curve. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. Mm hmm. All right. So uh, there's a couple of things I want to talk about and then. On to today's topics, okay? Mm -hmm. um, when we got monetized, uh, our community, you guys, the parapeeps, mm -hmm. we were going strong, and we were, you know, you guys helped us, and you pushed us over the hump, and that was that was awesome. And we kind of got, like, spread out and diversified. We're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're everywhere, okay? And... Um, I want to I want to get 
I mean, we're on Reddit and all kinds of stuff like that. We tried Discord. We actually still have it. But I want to be able, as a community, to, you know, you guys are the nucleus, pair of peeps, is to kind of build on that. And um, so I'm going to be trying some stuff. So if you follow us, you know, make sure you follow us. If you're on Twitter, follow us on Twitter. If you're on Instagram, you know, follow us on Instagram. All the links should be popping up and they're on our channel and everything like that. If you're putting out paranormal related videos, uh, we have a Reddit. We have two Reddits. You could put them out there. Uh, we also have a uh, Facebook group uh, for paranormal videos. Uh, if you want to get in on that kind of stuff, just send me a tweet or get a hold of me and we can start building this community up and start get it motivated again. But I'm going to be, some of the things we're going to be talking about tonight, I put out some polls. Um, but just start having fun. So I want that's one thing that we're lacking here on our channel is that that community involvement. Well, after the live show, we just put out videos and I don't want to keep throwing stuff out and you know just expect you guys to watch us. I mean, I get a lot of um, a lot, probably about 3 a week now, people who tweet or go through our Facebook page or whatever asking us how to deal with things. So I call that paranormal consulting. Okay, but these might not be people who follow us or parapeeps or something like that, you know. So I want to kind of get this community mm-hmm. kind of going. It's like we're it's we all, we're almost like what's that symbol for the atom? It's like all over the place. We're like all over the pl- you know how. Okay, you don't know what I'm talking about, but well, we're I know scattered what you're talking everywhere. About, but I don't feel we're and in very most scattered. cases, well, you don't do anything with it. Well, that's true. But. Okay, thank you. So I'm making, vi- I'm scripting videos, recording videos, <laughs> editing videos, posting videos, doing SEO optimization, all that other stuff, plus the social media and all that. Okay, it's it's a little too much, <laughs> but I think if we get stuff kind of like working together as a community and i said mary can you follow this thing and here's how you do that and i'll follow this and kind of get a little bit organized i guess that's what i'm trying to say oh so what you're saying is you're telling me on the air live with these peeps you want me to do more no but i think if we had a community (laughs) of you 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 watch the chat and and you know people who come on our live streams and stuff like that i watch our videos and do the comments and things but if you see like, you know, these people coming into our other platforms, I think you would be more driven to monitor that. Okay. Just my thought. Okay. I know it's kind of like I'm all over the place, but okay. that's just something I wanted to talk about. Shouldn't have even brought it up. Anyways, <laughs> <Okay>. let's go. <laughs> so uh, Mrs. Green Thumb is here and says hello to us. And hello. ATJH Travel says they're loving the videos. <clears throat> And uh, Desmond's daughter says, LOL, Paranormal Domestic Live. (laughs) (laughs) Paranormal. (laughs) That's funny. What's Uh, my cup say? I don't need Google. My wife knows everything. That's right. (laughs) All right, so what is this thing that we're going to be talking about today? Okay, so here's what I want to talk about. All right, so getting back to, like, when we were trying to get our hours and trying to grow the channel and get over, Marianne and I uh, put together some we we called it ghost hunting 201 so it's not like videos for beginners who want to get into ghost hunting it's for those who um, are already into it and kind of like never thought of certain things like how do you know different ways you can use digital camera during the uh, 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 investigation I think uh, we did a seminar last year uh, talked about how you can take your equipment and do um investigations while traveling you know that kind of stuff it's just like different topics of the way we do things so this past week um the location that we did was the uh, lorian uh, motel hotel whatever it's been both but um so we didn't have a lot of uh, material for that location and i thought okay well let's do one of these 201 videos again and, and we put it together, uh, and it's our list that we use for the locations. Actually, you could drop that link if you could find it. Um, it's why we believe certain locations are haunted. The reason why I'm bringing this up is not for you guys to go watch that video, unless you want to, if you're interested in that. 
what I was impressed about that was the comments that we got. I, I just want to show you because I think this is amazing. These are the best comments in a whole. I mean, we get a lot of good comments from you guys, and I really do appreciate that. But I like having those discussions, okay? These are some of the best comments we've got on any video thus far. You haven't seen these. You showed me a few. Okay. But I just want to show you guys. Look at the length of these comments. You know, I'm not making this up. I mean, look at that. This was actually stimulating a conversation, which was awesome. You know, so I got to thinking, okay, well, maybe, and this is why I want to ask you guys. I'm going to, I'm going to bring up some, I'm going to mention some of these comments, but do you guys want more of that stuff? Like, do you want us to try to work in into the schedule somehow? Um, you know, like we could do like how to investigate property or, you know, find out information about property. I know Frances, if she's still here, she asked that question the other night. Uh, on a show I was doing with Bill, like how do you look it up? Like how do you find out different things? We could do a video about that, how we do it. Um, and then maybe go over the equipment, like how, what, how's a K2 work, EMF, what that what that stuff means. Um, dive into the spirit box. I mean, what do, what do you guys think? Would you like to see more of those videos? Let me know. Let us know in chat. They just say they're really enjoying our history in the videos. They're really enjoying them. Uh, let's see here. Hannah Casto and ATGH Travels are doing some sort of secret thing tomorrow on their uh, live stream at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be a challenge, but they think they're going to be the first people to actually do it on YouTube. So definitely stop by and check that out tomorrow so desmond says he likes the idea of that you know i we're going to continue on with the what way we're doing locations i mean that's a given but maybe we might have like this coming week we're not going to do a photo video uh i i don't have time i don't know we might tomorrow maybe so like we could throw in another ghost hunting 201 next week we're not doing a photo video because i'm going to use those on the other stuff what okay no i'm just saying if if we have a space or we could you know we, we could just skip a week of a location and do those kind of videos and then get back into the locations i need that from time to time to kind of break up a little bit of the monotony i'm not i'm not the kind of guy that likes uh repetitive things that's true you're not good at that i'm stuff. not good you would at never repetitive. have been done no. well on factory a job i no, i couldn't i couldn't get it that's why i really like my job i have at work even though i complain about it all the time but i really like it because every day is new it's something different you gotta solve it but i was kind of getting like into repetitive you know the same type of thing okay we gotta do ghost stories and folklore we gotta do the history video we gotta do this we gotta do this and even though we were changing topics it was like it was still repetitive well, see, I like it. I want to know how to go about researching a property. Like, I want to find out about the land that my trailer park sits on. See, that's what I just said. Um, we could do a video about that in the Ghost uh, Hunting 201. I mean, would that be of interest? See, I think if we do it as a video, now it becomes reference. You know, you could go back and bring it up and say, okay, here's what Sean said. Here's what, how they do that. So, you know, we could capture screens and all that and show you how we do the property searches and get a name. And then once you have a name, drill in and try to find more and look in books and look in National Archives, you know, that kind of stuff and drill down and find out what you, what you can't. I mean, Francis, is, how does that sound? Does that sound like it makes a good video? That's That's what I'm trying to say, so. <clears throat> while ATH, uh, ATJH travels and Hannah is here I want to tell you guys something this week coming up we are doing location that's really probably down the street from you guys yeah and if you can get there by the 18th of February uh, it would behoove you to do that yeah. I know we've talked before about you guys going there and you hadn't I don't know if you have since we talked about it though um, but 
the 18th is the final day of the exhibition. I have a feeling that we're going to get people in here that uh, are going to be interested in this. But are you guys, everybody in chat, are you guys into the beginning of like the space race, the Apollo programs and that kind of stuff, and the first man on the moon and everything like that? If you are, leave a number one in chat. I, I'm just kind of interested. If you're not, I'm sorry, because that's Thursday's video. But <laughs> <laughs> if that's something that interests you, let me know. Like a little prejudging that video, because Thursday's video comes from the Heinz Historical Museum in Pittsburgh, where, until where you said the date, February, February 18th, I believe it is. February 18th, they have the Apollo 11 Command Module Columbia mm -hmm. on display. They do. You can actually go and see it. Mm -hmm. We went there October. I got some video uh, from it, video clips, and there's other stuff in the museum. Of course, the museum's haunted, so that's why it's being featured next, next week. But um, Thursday's video is just going to be about the Apollo display because that's really why we wanted to go there now I went back and looked we've been to DC before we actually uh, went and saw a space shuttle got pictures of that mm -hmm. standing next to mm -hmm. it and then we went to downtown DC to the Smithsonian's and we went around to the uh, aeronautics in there and I don't have pictures of the Apollo there even though it's on loan in Pittsburgh right now um, from the Smithsonian I don't think they had it on display. I really don't because we would have had pictures of it. I would have went oh, yeah, we looking for the Apollo 11. That's mm -hmm. the one that first man on the moon. Mm -hmm. So um, I think what they're going to be doing is it's traveling now and they're building a permanent display in, in D.C. It's going to go back to D.C. Mm -hmm. and go to that permanent uh, thing. It's just amazing. It is amazing. Like I'm from here to the camera. I could have reached out and touched it, and Marion's like, "No, no, we're gonna get kicked out of here." I yeah, could have reached get, out and yeah, touched. We could have the command module that circled that. Yep. The moon. Yes. And came back. Yes, we were that close. We were that close. Mm -hmm. So Thursday's video. If you guys are into that stuff, don't miss Thursday's video because that's gonna be awesome. And then I figured out something last night too that's kind of cool. Uh, right. Yes, video about researching a property or a piece of land would be a great video. Yes. Uh, and they did seem to enjoy the idea of the uh, space. There were a couple of people who mentioned that in the chat that they would be looking forward See, to. I know our peeps. I know what they like. Mm -hmm. Yes, space race would be cool. Looking forward to it very much. So there you go. But and ATGH. unapologetically, Gomez or Gomes, it we always still say it wrong. But they are. <laughs> oh, hello, <laughs> hello, are hello. I hope you like that little video that we sent you. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you did. You commented back. I, I didn't tell you. Okay. But, boy, that was a busy night. That was Thursday night. That was crazy. Yes, Thursday night was crazy. Like I, I, I'll tell you about Thursday so you guys kind of feel my pain. I came came home i knew at we recorded a, a video clip for let's say i can't say it, i'm unapologetically gomez. gomez i think it's gomes is it is it gomes or gomez just curious i, I think like it's gomez. i like saying gomez but i thought i heard them say gomes okay maybe it's gomes anyways we recorded a little clip i was going to upload it and then when i got on facebook i got a personal message for a cons consult and i was supposed to be well, at 6 o'clock, Happy Trails Hiking goes live on Thursdays. At 8 o'clock, I, I started a live stream with PSPR Paranormal, which I know he's probably not here right now. And I'm going to ask you guys for prayers here in a little bit for PSPR. Um, and um, 8 o'clock, no, wait, that was at 8. And then at 9 o'clock, I was on, we were both on Ghost Mafia. Thursday night. That was yeah. Thursday night. That was just Thursday night, yeah. <laughs> That one actually was a lasted. Busy. That one actually lasted into Friday morning. Yeah, and then we had to be back to work on yeah, Friday. Yeah. So, anyways, back to PSPR. If you guys can just include him in his purse, I know his father. He's in. He's up at the hospital with his father. His father was rushed to the hospital, and okay. that's that's where he's at. Okay. Uh, at least a couple hours ago, I've I was talking to him on Facebook. But 
All right. Uh, yeah, just include him and his family. That would be grateful. All right. So, uh, unapologetically, Gomes says that Marianne is right. You're right. So it's Gomes. So it's Gomes. Okay. I like gnomes. I like Gomez, but I think I I had swore I heard them say their name is Gomes. So, anyways, uh, and Desmond's daughter says the Apollo program was what inspired them to get into aerospace. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, the Apollo program was like oh, well, the first man walked on the moon July twentieth. I think I'm close on that date, or exact on that date, maybe. July 20th of 1969. Mm-hmm. That I was almost one year old. I was not. And the challenge was put out by Kennedy for in to, to have it done by the end of the decade in 62. All right. So, so um, am I right? Am I right? Well, she's, she's fact return, checking me. The return launch was the 21st. So they What's may that have say? been on say? July the moon. 20th. July twentieth, yeah, nineteen sixty nine was when it was the Eagle was on the moon, but the the Apollo eleven launched on July sixteenth. Yeah, then, it launched yeah. the sixteenth. They he walked on the moon on the twentieth and it came home. Would you say the twenty first? Twenty first was the return launch. Oh, that's when they took off from yes. from the moon so, to yes. come home. So the title of Thursday's uh, video is going to be from the moon to Pittsburgh. So. I uh, love it. I hope you have all done by Wednesday. Thank you. I oh, hope they have their video done by Wednesday. Okay, that's awesome. Yes. And Budget Bushcraft is here. Budget Bushcraft. Hello. To hello. Everyone. Hello. Hello. All right. So last Thursday's video, um, which is basically kind of like the topic of today's show and those comments, got a little bit of an update to put in that, that we've learned some new stuff through the comments. Which is very cool. I love learning new stuff. I don't know. Maybe I'm a geek. I hated learning stuff as a kid. I really was like, I ain't reading no book. Just let's do this. I was more social. Now it's like, I like to learn something new every day. She's ignoring me again as I'm looking at her. I know. I'm, I'm typing. Okay. I'm dealing with the chat. I'm I was going to ask piece. you to tell them the thing that we learned about cemeteries. Oh, I see. Well, it's just that the first person that is interred in that cemetery becomes the guardian of the cemetery. Yeah, that was uh, UK. Was that UK? Yeah, I think it was the UK. Oh, Desmond Donners is the one that left that comment. Thank you very much. We learned something new from that. That was actually pretty uh, awesome. His comment was, many churches in the UK were built over pagan ceremonial sites. And this could be the source of hauntings in such places. Well, maybe I'm wrong. It wasn't his. But he, the pagan sites, that's something else we learned about. Uh, that We learned that about churches. I was going to come to that in a second. So in the UK, many churches were built over pagan ritual sites, which is kind of interesting. Okay, Where's so the I one wanted, about this cemetery? I don't what? know. I wanted to touch on that whole that whole process there because I had dug up a cemetery and I want to talk about that but a uh, bunch of bushcrafts he, he had a comment that was really funny here says that it's so cold where he said he had to start a supplemental fire with his Lincoln witness tree wood chip oh no <laughs> oh my gosh oh no he said that's lol good, right? though uh, but that's kind of funny <laughs> he was one of our winners uh, and one of uh, piece of a uh, witness tree from Gettysburg from us so uh, and ATJH travels I said they have to get to the uh, Heinz History Center in the next few weeks because is that it's close just to so where important. you guys is that close to where you guys live are you know where we're talking about the Heinz Heinz History Center it's actually called a senator Senator John Heinz Senator John Heinz History, history Museum that's actually where they have the sports stuff and right. and, and all that's, that stuff's in there too. A lot of Pittsburgh Steelers stuff in there. There is a lot of Pittsburgh, lot of Pittsburgh Steelers stuff. Steelers stuff. I bet you you're going to want to go. It's five miles away. See, I knew you it was close. You have to get there in the next few weeks. <laughs> they said they will try, but you just have to make it happen. You guys are going to want to go once you see our, our yeah. videos. Yeah. So, I don't know. Have Did we ask them if they've been there before? They've been, been there, there several times. times. Okay. All right. So then you might get bored with our videos. Uh, although the Apollo stuff, you might the Apollo stuff hasn't have not seen it. 
Okay, so uh, another thing before I forget. Patreon. Patreon, uh, I need to talk about that. Okay. Like I was saying about our community and stuff, we wanted to use, we tried um, Discord. Yeah, it's not yeah. really for us. It's not really kind of working. <laughs> it doesn't um, work for so us. So then we said, okay, season two, we want people to follow us on Discord. You can follow us on Discord and see our posts, our history. We're going to continue to do that. But our Patreon page is not, we're not getting new subscribers or followers. So it's scrolling. Right there is the link down right there. You know, you can create a Patreon account and follow us. But I'm starting to post more and more videos for the $1 a month subscriber. And the video that's going to be coming out is the Mr. Rogers stuff that's out there. The uh, props and that kind of stuff. I'm going to make a video from that. And that's going to be for our Patreon support. Right. The $1 level. Okay. So $12 a year. You can see some of these behind the scenes. We got a bloopers one that's coming out. I didn't finish it, but it's coming out. And uh, there's some other stuff in there, too, that's already out there. But you can go back and pull that up. So just mention that. $12 a year, you get access to some of this behind the scenes stuff. And stuff that's not really quite paranormal, I'm going to put that out there, too. So. All right. So. I was looking for the cemetery. Topic. Go ahead. And, I was looking for the cemetery one. I can't remember who posted that. ATGH Travel says that they had Patreon and they canceled their account because they didn't have enough traffic. Okay. Well, you can create another one and follow us. <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to pay. You could just follow us and skip over it and say you're following and then you could see our public posts. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, anyways, as far as the uh <laughs> they're laughing. Uh the, the one that you're looking for, is it the one that I, I mentioned already? Yes. Okay. About being the first one. Yeah. All Where right. did I get that from? Is I, that I don't know. Somebody's, somebody said that. But I can't find it now, but it's in there. I, uh, I wondered about that. Like, as soon as you said that, um, there's two things that came to mind. One, um, I dug up a, a cemetery. Mm -hmm. And we moved 117 bodies from one location to another location uh, the best we could, obviously. It was from uh, a cemetery from 1804, so everything was just wooden caskets and things, and then they kind of disintegrated, and, you know, so we took as much as we possibly could. Um, and I wondered, do does the uh, first person that's buried there that becomes that guardian stay there at that location or do they go to the new cemetery? I don't know. And I, that's my question. What do you guys think? Know. Do you guys think that... I hope they understand what you're saying because I kind of like don't. But You don't understand? I moved a cemetery. You moved a cemetery, an existing 1800 cemetery, right? Right. It's not before. It was 1804. So was the first you period. relocated that cemetery... To a new place. To a, another existing cemetery. Right. To me, I would think, and this is theory, to me, you're... you're whoever's already the guardian of the other cemetery might have issues with somebody moving in on their territory. Yeah, but do they get to, like, retire and, and just go lay down and Maybe. take a nap? Or or do they stay there just in case we missed a bone or a piece of a bone or something, and, hey, they just have to stay there and guard it? That's a good question. It's a parking lot now. Isn't it? It's a parking lot now. Yeah. yeah. That's a good question. Hmm. That's That was, like, the first thing that popped into my head. The second thing that popped into my head was, remember that movie with Michael J. Fox mm -hmm. where he was, like, that unscrupulous, you know, uh, paranormal investigator that kind of chit-chatted with all the ghosts. They had a guardian of the cemetery in that movie, and I was wondering if they actually had, you know, known about this. Based on that. And that based belief. that character yeah. in the movie on that idea. So Budget Bushcraft says he thinks it follows. Okay. Okay. It could. All right. It could. <clears throat> we're doing, uh, we're going to do a collection of video with Hollywood Grave Tours. Hopefully our video gets picked up for the series, Famous Graves. Awesome. Where you live. That's, That's pretty really awesome. cool, ATGH Travels. <clears throat> um, well, Desmond Sauter says, I didn't know there was a retirement age for ghosts. Well, I, I don't think there really 
is, <laughs> but I was just saying, hey, if there's already a guardian where they're going, maybe they don't have to be the guardian anymore. <laughs> maybe. All right, so uh, if you didn't see the video from Thursday, basically what it was about was we broke down like private homes, cemeteries, theaters, churches, schools, colleges, hotels, on and on and on, those different areas and why they could be haunted, like the different reasons as to why they could be haunted. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we're talking cemeteries. That was one of them. So I have a question for you guys in chat. How many in chat believe that a cemetery could be haunted? Because that's a big topic in the paranormal field. You know, some say, oh, no, you know, cemeteries aren't going to be haunted. Or, you know, some, oh, definitely they are. Um, I just want to know in chat, if you think they, they they are or they aren't. And I put a poll out on uh, Twitter asking that same question. And um, I didn't Bushcraft, ask before we put the video out. Budget Bushcraft sure. and Desmond Donders both say yes. <clears throat> and ATGH says uh, that was an awesome video, and yes, it could be haunted. H. Casto, Hannah says, I think they are. So our pair of peeps here say yes. Yeah, well, the the Twitter poll was in, kind of in line with that, too. So um, does Francis Urban Spirits. Eighty-six percent believe that uh, cemeteries could be haunted. Now, in our video, we gave the reasoning why we think that a cemetery could be haunted. Mm -hmm. Okay? Desec uh, desecration of the grave, improper interment, not proper markings, unmarked graves, those kind of things. Not all kinda... of the organism being buried there. Right, right. Religious... Uh, um, because the Latin word, the, the term, we always say rest in peace, you know, rest in peace. That's just part of our culture now is rest in peace. But that dates back, and I looked it up, you're going to be impressed. That dates back to the early 1600s, okay? And it's, there's a Latin, it, it comes from Latin. And uh, I'm kind of questioning why they started saying that. Like, is was there a reason why? And if what happens if the spirit is not resting in peace? That could be why a cemetery is haunting. So that's the point I'm trying to make. Budget Bushcraft says they've caught mists in them on camera. Yeah, we've been to many uh, interesting cemeteries. Mm -hmm. It's not everywhere within that cemetery, but yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely something going on in cemeteries, especially properties. And you guys would be surprised. Properties that have been wiped clean of the gravestones and the bodies are still there. Mm -hmm. Now they're all unmarked graves. Mm -hmm. There's a park in San Diego. Eventually we'll do the videos on that. That's true. That The whole park still has the bodies. They just moved the headstones for... Uh... Details. Yeah. They, they have a little park there now. Yeah, it's a park now. It's a nice park, actually. Yeah. Uh... And Teresa Gregory adds that technically someone could have died in the location before it was a cemetery, too. Which was one of our other ideas for other locations as well. But yeah, it makes sense for a cemetery, too. Uh, another question I ask, and I bet you I'm going to get a lot of it here in chat, um, people saying yes, um, is if people believed that they may either now or at one time have lived in a haunted house. All right, hold that thought for one minute there. Dan's Haunted Cottage says, yes, especially over here in the UK, where a lot of graveyards are attached to ancient churches, people attached to the church and maybe interred there so they visit the building, not specifically the graves themselves. Um, and uh, there is Francis Urban Spirits says that there is an abandoned cemetery that she goes to. And there's over 600 graves, but only 100 gravestones. So, so they're, they're, if something happens to a gravestone, okay, whether it's removed, um, vandalism, weather, weather, something like that, that grave now becomes unmarked. Mm -hmm. Could that cause a disturbance? My opinion, again, in theory, is yes, it could. Now that proper burial is not proper. Mm -hmm. So, 
And ATJ Travis says that uh, I'm rushing, rushing, rushing. I know. Slow down. Yeah. Slow and then, down. <laughs> ATJ Travel says that their grandmother's old house was built near a Civil War grave site in West Virginia, and it was very creepy there at night. And they absolutely believe that the house can be haunted as well. So, all right, now you can go on. I was just trying to. Well, go. okay, so this kind of ties. This is a we good segue. We asked him to talk with us. Well, this is a good segue where the where the house is built next to the cemetery. Right. So I put it. I put a question out on Twitter and I asked um, if you have lived or if you believe that at one time you lived in a haunted house. And this is it's quite interesting what I got. I mean, we had like sixty five people respond to that that uh, thing. And uh, 63 of them said yes. 63%. 63%. Yeah, 63% said yes. 34% said no. And 3% said I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan's Haunted See, Cottage well, says that they lived in a few haunted houses. Okay, uh, well, the point I'm trying to make is this is what keeps me in the paranormal research. Is why are there so many people saying this? Why are there so many paranormal reports? Why is there so much everywhere? You know, there there's another theory out there, and these are more videos that we could do about the different theories, okay? I forget the wording, but we project, we create spirits with our mind because in mass thought we think of ghosts and they, they appear, you know, that kind of stuff. It's like a, a form of telepathy or something like that. But... You know, it's it's so widespread. I would love to, you know, have more statistics and say, yeah, you know, sixty three percent say they they believe they lived in a haunted house. Why is that happening? It can't be mass hysteria, I wouldn't think. But, anyways, okay, back to the chat. <laughs> All right. So, um, Rick Johnson, hello. Francis Urban Spirit says that um, the. Cemetery she's talking about is the one with a carnival lady that's buried there that she talked to us about before. Uh, and Budget Bushcraft says there's a bar where he's at, and it constantly reports crazy stuff, and it backs up to a 17 and 1800 cemetery, which is kind of cool. I that's don't know if you caught when we were on Ghost Mafia uh, Thursday night, but uh, we were talking about Manson and um, his mother's house and where he lived as a child is down around wheeling and wheeling is all kinds of activity down there because it disturbed indian barrel grounds and all kinds of stuff like that and i thought it just immediately popped in my head maybe that's what was wrong with this guy he was possessed well and his mom and his mom was messed well. up too um, yeah i think it know. didn't his mom kill someone too or something no she was no? i think she was just a prostitute I'm, oh. I'm not sure about right. that well she could have she might knows, have but uh yeah and i think about the uh when when he was mentioning that bar that de zombified you're late no i'm just <laughs> kidding um when they were talking he was talking about that bar uh it reminds me of the one in key west where the bodies are buried in the pool room remember captain tony's captain tony's yep. yeah and it has a gravestone in there from a grave that was taken from the person's actual grave site and dropped off there yeah by the husband who was ticked with here, take this. and said this is where you wanted to be stay here and uh hmm that gravestone is there different yeah. bodies that are buried there but a gravestone for someone else Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. ATJH Travel says they've seen a few orbs in their house. Um, I know that somebody said they had not lived in a haunted house. They said, nope, not me. Uh, who was that one? I remember seeing it. I lost it in the, in the list. Desmond Donder said not him. They did not. All right. And I think that I'm caught up. So, Desmond, have you in your travel seen anything that's kind of like 
interesting. You know, he does a lot of traveling with Donder. Hmm. Yes. Um, So lots of people are mentioning orbs in, in the chat, and uh, okay. orbs are a big controversial thing in the paranormal realm. Uh, so lots of them are saying they have pictures uh, that they have, video. See, that could be another video that I, that we put out there to kind of kind of tell you. Or, and I mentioned this too: you go on ghost hunts, and we've been on several. Or not ghost hunts, ghost tours. We've been on several ghost tours. So many I couldn't tell you how many we've been on. All right. Every time you go on a ghost tour, the tour guide always tells the muggles, okay, I'm not using the word straights, but the non-paranormal people, the muggles that are on them tours, get out your camera and take pictures. And if you see spots in it, that's a ghost, okay? <sighs> that's not always the case, okay? That's not always the case. It could be dust. It could be moisture. It could be a bug. It could be lens flare. It could be all that stuff. So then that causes controversy in the paranormal realm saying, no, it's this, it's this, it's this, it's not. A, okay. okay, here's what I look for in our pictures. Number one, is that orb emitting its own light? Is it a color? Is it? Is there a pattern? Now, Marianne and, and, and myself, we're kind of like, we trained ourselves and the people that went out with us, we trained them that you take more than one picture. Mm -hmm. You stand there and as fast as that camera's flash will charge, you take three to five pictures in the same spot, okay? If you see the movement and you see them coming towards you and out and that, and that kind of thing, then you start looking a little bit closer at the orbs. You could put them on a computer, you could zoom in on them and bring them up, okay? So I look for two things, or three things. One, is there movement, okay? Which, it still could be dust or whatever, you know, whatever, but that will cut out flare, okay? Is it duplicated in other pictures, okay? Because that could be a flare, like it's bouncing off of a mirror or a window or something like that. Um, I also look to see if it's a certain color light. Like, we've got orb pictures where they're blue, they're orange, they're green, they're, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. And if you zoom in on it, can you see anything in that orb? A lot of cases you could zoom in, you could see a face, or you could see something in, in those pictures. Do we say they're paranormal? We can never say anything is paranormal evidence. But if you can't explain it, the definition of paranormal means you scientifically cannot explain what the occurrence is. So it's potential evidence. I hope that makes sense, and I hope I didn't tick people off in the chat, but that's the way we do things. And I like to see if, you know, we take multiple pictures, like you said, and I like to see if they're going up, because if they're going up, you know, picture to picture, that's generally not something that happens with uh, Are they know, dust or anything like yeah. that. Uh, when I take a picture, I always look at the flashlight when it comes out. Do mm. I see any Do you dust see it or in debris the in the in the in the stream of the flash? Like you can you can look and you can see that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that's kind of cool to look at and and helps to cut that down. Like at Ohio State, yeah, at uh, no at Mansfield, Ohio State Reformatory. Ohio State Reformatory at Mansfield. Um, there's a, a room, storage room, I the know exactly storage what room, you're and about. it's like really dusty in there. And You'll as get soon pictures as I like took, crazy yeah, as soon dust. as I took a, a picture, I saw just tons of dust in the stream of the the flash, and I knew that nothing in that room was going to be evidence. Yeah, uh, anything photography wise, anyhow. Yeah, but if you know, if you want to send it footage or anything like that, you know, we we could look at it and see, and uh, you know. It, it never know if you can't figure out like if it okay did that light like if it's just a tiny little ball you know and it fits in video and it's moving okay well you know that's not going to be if you're not moving that's not going to be lens flare and you're not going to get much lens flare on video unless you have a light source coming in on that camera okay so say it's moving so now you have to just use here's a good here here you go here you go when you're going over evidence, it's a process of elimination, okay? You want to rule out lens flare. 
Now, if it's moving, it could be moisture, dust, or a bug, okay? So if it's moisture or dust, it's not going to be one ball. You're going to see it's going to look like snow. You're going to see multiple, okay? It's not one piece of dust you're going to pick up. Mm -hmm. You're going to get multiple pieces of dust because it's dusty in that area. Moisture normally happens outside unless a sprinkler system is going off. And then in that case, you don't want to be worried about going to a ghost. You better exit the building. But <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so now you got to eliminate it. Could it be a bug? We have a thing that we did on Dark Shadow Ghost Stores, and I could put this in that video that I'm talking about on how different insects look like on video, like they're flat, they're, you know, that kind of thing. So if you zoom in and you see like a little face, but it's a round ball that's lighting up, it could be... It could be something paranormal. Now, if you see them with your own eye and not a camera and nothing like that, which I have in Mansfield, and I caught pictures of it. It was a blue ball moving in the warden's room. And I tried, I got a picture of it, you know, but it took forever to get it. Then there's something interesting is going on there. So, okay. So, uh,. <laughs> Dan's Haunted Cottage says the thing with earlier cameras is that the flash was built close to the lens, and so that created a lot of orb-like photos, which I find interesting because I think we see more of them now than I did in old photos. What do you think? Do you think that you Well, there's that? also a theory out there. We've had paranormal uh, investigators that we used to associate it with that believed that if you go back to photos, they could appear in the photos. If you go back and start looking through them and leave them sit for a while and go back and look at them. I don't know about that one, but hey, anything's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, if and you then... use the rule that anything could possibly be happening, yeah, that could happen. I've gone back over old photos when I'm getting ready to do videos. I'm like, holy crap, I didn't see that. Look at that. It's a face. We did that with the Chicago ones. Like you went down and it's like a face type thing. This is interesting. But then there's a theory that debunks that. So There is. Yeah. We yeah. don't know. That's yeah. right. Dan's Haunted Cottage. We don't know. But but isn't the quest and adventure a blast? Yeah, that's really good. That's the part yes. we need to enjoy ourselves and have fun. Paranormal unity. You know, let's let's discuss, not get mad at each other. Exactly. Now, Rick Johnson did have a question, wanted to know if leaving the shutter open on the camera would do any good for anything. It would brighten up your whole picture. It would, but would that, isn't <clears throat> that going to also... Um, well, if you open up your shutter, you can reduce the amount of flash. Right, but would that give you more, if you shook the camera at all, that would give you those zigzag things? It'll that, give you zigzagging. It would show that... If you opened up the shutter, it would show the movement, especially if you had an orb that's emitting light. That would you would see that zigzag if you open the shutter up in darkness. Yeah. So there's see, and these are more videos that we could put together too, like different techniques. Okay. Like if there are reports, and you always have to go based on reports if you're gonna be conducting like scientifically based tests. Say the report is they see balls of light, okay? That's a great idea is to set up a camera in the dark with the shutter open or do like a time lapse mm -hmm. and leave it set and walk away from it. You know, we've used field cameras and set them up based on the claims. Mm -hmm. You heard us tell a story. I, I'm sure you guys heard us tell a story about the basement at the orphanage where I set Mary in down to get the camera. That was a field camera that we yeah, just set up was. down there that goes off on motion. Mm -hmm. We were we had it shooting down the hall trying to capture um, photos of shadow figures that's been reported in that hall. And if it sees motion, mm -hmm. it'll take a picture. Right. So, you know, there's different things that you can do, different tests to, to try to either prove or debunk the claims. Okay. Uh, Rick Johnson's well, mentioning they got me fired a place. Up. Rick Johnson's I love mentioning a place for, that we, we should visit. Uh, and um, it's in Indiana. And oh, what did he name it? He named it. Oh, I keep losing oh, he's a, stuff. He's asking what streamers are. Oh, okay. that's different. But he was saying that there was a place that I we need to visit, and uh, basically that there was a, a it was an underground railroad place, 
uh, and a lantern got knocked over and everybody died from the fire in the so basement. Where's, where's it at? In Indiana. Indiana. It's not mm-hmm. that far. Indianapolis. Interesting. Hannah House. Write that down. Hannah yes, House. There we go. Thank you for writing it again. I was scrolling Hannah up House. in the chat trying to find it. So. I think we should get an investigator in here. In where? Where do we send material? Okay, you, you send material. Oh, we got all kinds of different ways. But the best way to send us stuff actually is probably through the email. Because um, then that way it doesn't get deleted or overlooked or anything. And our email's on the screen here Panic D videos. It's right down there Panic D videos at gmail.com. Um, you could send us stuff. And if you need to talk, I do, I do a private, I, I'm calling it private paranormal consulting. So if you're on Twitter, you could DM me or Twitter's there. If you're on Facebook, you know, friend me on Facebook. And actually I have one to do tonight to get back with a guy and I'll just give you some suggestions and point you in the right directions. You know, if you're close, we could we could come and help you. I really don't like to do residential stuff. We used to do that, but I don't mind consulting and helping you out. And if it gets to a point where you need additional help, I'll help you find a reputable group in your area and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So definitely anytime if you have questions or whatever, please, um, yeah, please just ask me a question. And I might not get back to you like right away, but pretty close because I checked that stuff multiple times. While Facebook, our Facebook page, I only we've been on Facebook for like ever and they keep changing yeah. it. And we got a ton of messages on our Facebook, Painting D Facebook page, not the group, but right. the page. Right. And I missed a couple of them, but I got back in touch with them. So that's why I'm kind of yeah. a little bit back. And, and it's interesting because I get like every now and again, I'll get a little thing that says, oh, somebody sent you a message. Yeah. And I go on Facebook every day and uh, I didn't even get messages about it for like two weeks on the one. And I felt bad. Um, Thanks for stopping by, ATJH Travels. Oh, they're leaving? Okay. They are. And I don't say that they're leaving. They said it's awesome stream. Oh, gotta got to go. Got to go. GTG. GTG means got to go. <laughs> yeah. All right. You guys have an awesome evening. Yeah. Thank it's, you for stopping And we're glad by. to know you, too. And someday and we together. are going to get yes. together. Not that far. I know. <sighs> um, I think that is about it. We have you on chat. Facebook and Twitter. Say, yeah, I'm pretty sure that we follow your channel. I will double check. Yes, we do. Yep. Okay. So a couple uh, uh, other things, some new things. Um, Thursday nights on PSPR at 8 o'clock, I'm going to be doing a show with him. Help Bill get his hours. He's got the subscribers. He's getting the views, but he needs his hours. So we're doing a show called Ghost Tech Talk. We just started it Thursday. I don't know if we're going to be doing this Thursday because the whole thing he's got going on with his dad. But we're going to try to do it on a regular basis on his channel um, for like an hour. Um, this past show, we're, we're working out like the format, that kind of thing. But we were talking about spirit boxes, you know, and uh, we got some other topics we're going to be talking about, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then... Those of you who do make paranormal related videos, I should have said this in the beginning because people are leaving, but if you are, please get a hold of me and let me know because I have ways to help you promote your videos. I I want to I want this is why I want to build a community. We have we have things in place that we can help you promote it. We have Reddits. We have um Virtual ghost hunt. We have uh, our groups. There's there's groups that we're part of, um, and when I say we, Panic D videos and PSPR. So it could help you grow your channel. Now, we've made a pact, Bill and I did, that once we both hit three thousand, and he's monetized, we're gonna fire up virtual ghost hunt. 
and we're going to help paranormal channels. We're going to do inductions. We're going to have people be inducted into virtual ghost hunt and do shout outs and help with channel, you know, optimization and that kind of stuff on virtual ghost hunt. So, um, we started that like almost a year ago. It's just neither one of us have had time. But I think once we both hit that level and we could just back down on our regular channels and just do our own thing, we'll get spend time on there and get back to you guys and help you out. So that's our plan. All right. Timey says that she's hungry because her neighbor is barbecuing. Oh, that would be, yeah, that's rough. That's rough. Anybody in here use Premiere? Adobe Premiere. Because I, this is why I was up late last night. I am very excited about this. I bought Premiere this summer. We get a pretty nice discount on it. I never used it because my old editor, I can knock it out and get it done. Um, why did I get the claws? I got the claws. Because I like to give you the claws. Oh, okay. So I was able to clean up our, our video. It was a little shaky. The one we're doing Thursday was a little shaky. I don't know if you guys know I have that shaky problem. I'm trying to do some things to correct it. But I really didn't care on ghost stories and folklore because they're supposed to be creepy anyway. So, so the video. But when I want to do like a documentary type thing, like this Apollo one coming out, or the one that we did on the Lincoln's thing, I want it nice, smooth pan zooms. Premiere actually has the ability that you can put the video in there and you put a warp filter on it and you let it render and it takes the shaky out. So now it's worth me paying for it. Okay. <clears throat> so. What editing do I use? Um, okay. I use Corel Video Studio for 99% of our videos. Mm -hmm. I've used it for years. I used it before Corel bought it. it was uh, Video, Video Studio. Video Studio before, yeah. Um, I just bought the Adobe package with Photoshop, Premiere, and all that other stuff because I was having problems with the new version of Corel. I couldn't get it to work. I was going back and forth with the company. I was really getting ticked with them. And I'm like, you know, I've been using you guys for like 20 years, and this is ridiculous and that kind of stuff. Because even though Panic D videos is kind of like, you know, you guys were just meeting you guys and growing this. I do video production and stuff like that for school and for school and other stuff. So I've always used um, Corel Video Studio. Right. I wanted to get into Premiere because you can get a lot of filters and do a lot of things like that that I couldn't figure out or it's not available on, on Video Studio. But it is expensive. You know, you got to pay a monthly fee for Premiere. Um, so Corel Video Studio is actually, I think it's 99 bucks one time fee. And it has a lot of stuff and filters. And um, now I figured out you can make pictures move and all kinds of stuff like and that. I, so. And I had my students at school use it as well yeah. um, for some of their uh, videos that I have them do for saving sea turtles and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's easy enough that the kids can figure it out. Although the now that was a, that was like seven or eight years ago when they were doing that now the kids are like can i just do it on my phone i mean they and they make even better videos yeah. on their phone but okay so teresa would you rather us friend your your channel page or facebook on facebook or you guys personally i i would say all the above but you know why not i probably to be honest with you i probably monitor my personal one more than the page but we're trying to fix that <laughs> I, I, I do twitter i'm the twitter person and i'm trying to get somebody to do the facebook one but there's also a group on panic d2 that um we're moving to that so whatever you whatever it's fine uh what was the other question okay so i'm poor let's see i need an editing thing that's free i'm poor i have no clue how to edit um Okay, so a free editor. I know a lot of people... Oh, here we go. Windows Movie Maker. Yeah, you can use Movie Maker. Um, what's the that other one? That usually comes free with uh, Windows. Well, Windows 10 is kind of hard to get. It, but, um, really? Yeah. That's sad. You can get it, but you have to add it on there. Um, 
There's another one that people's talking about too. That's kind of making a, a. The kids use apps on their phones, which. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to guess that most of the kids are going to be using free ones. Uh. Timey He's says, I monitor board. my pages more. Uh, well, here's my problem, Timey. I'm actually the manager and monitor about 85 pages on Facebook. That's literally. True. And I'm not getting, like, notifications because I monitor, like, 85 pages on Facebook. Since our main business is internet marketing for small businesses... I normally set up their pages and stuff for them and, and that kind of stuff. And not, so I get notifications, like, you know, but not the ones for us. So that's a problem. I should have had a separate account, but wasn't thinking. <clears throat> so uh, that's why I'm missing a lot of notifications from our pages. And if, yeah, but I'm only, I'm only about 10 and I... Yeah, you're starting to miss them too. And, I'm, yeah. and they're not sending them to me either. Yeah. Uh, but we are getting a few people who are saying VSDC... Uh, it's yeah, a see, good free I, movie video editor, but I've never used it. But it I've is used freeware. Movie Maker before. I've used um, video software. Deluxe yeah, I've editor. used a couple of the free ones before because we were trying to get them for the school, and it just wasn't didn't kind of have everything that the kids wanted. So um, I, I'm sorry I can't really answer that because I don't. Yeah. I love sushi. Who said that? Rick Johnson. I love sushi. Oh, Timey said her husband got her sushi, so that's probably why they put I love sushi there. I'm Marianne not. loves sushi. No, I do she not. She loves any kind of raw food. No. Everything I have to have is, like, super cooked. <laughs> I don't want any of that <laughs> stuff that's still alive. <laughs> and I know sushi is dead fish. You think I, I would it, like... No. Cook it. Tommy, Tommy says, I think you would like that one. Like what? What, what did I miss? Hit Film Express. I, oh, I, you know what? I, I, don't, I had. I, I'm happy with my Curl Video Studio and my Premiere now that I figured out how to. I actually own that one, Hit okay. Film Express. See, ask her. I actually own that one, but I, that's <clears throat> on that com laptop that just died. But um, okay. I, I never really got into it. I thought it was kind of difficult to use in comparison to Video Studio. Um, I, I thought Video Studio was easier, but... See, I'm just familiar with using it since I've used it literally for almost 20 years. You know, so if they do an update on it, yeah, they might move something somewhere, but I kind of know it. Because then when I get in the mode of editing, I'm like, okay, I want to drop this here. I want to make this move, do that, like that. I don't want to have to go. How do I do that? Because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, folks. The older I get, I'm developing this conditional ADD. Because <laughs> if I have to say, okay, how do I do that? And I go look on for a YouTube video to how to do that. I'm not coming back for like two, three hours, or it's time to go to bed it's and true. nothing gets done. Right? It's true. Right? right? Yes. Yeah, I agree, Tommy. Hit Films does have a lot of tutorials. They're actually, um, I believe, per the same company that I have for my green screen photography for stills. Um, but I just, I don't know. I just never got into the hang of it. I, I preferred the other one. So, so Francis, I, let me help you out. Let, let me help you out with this, okay? Um if, if you learn the basic terminology and like the little symbols, okay, like this means like scissors means cut and you know that kind of thing. And if you learn like, okay, that button, you know, the arrows play and pause and that kind of stuff. And the terminology like splicing and you know, know that editors will let you separate your audio from your video and you can recolor things and you can put filters on them and do that kind of stuff. If you understand that terminology, that applies, really, that applies to every video editor. Okay? So as far as easy to That's use, true. the only thing you knew, need to do is figure out where that button or that filter or that kind of thing is. Okay? So, like, let's say you find, let's say 
when this happens. Say you get an editor and you get into it and you get used to it and you're doing good and everything. Now your channel, you're starting to generate income and stuff from your channel and you want to upgrade, you know, take it to another, you know, you want to uh, buy a package that'll do more stuff like clean up the, the, the brightness and stuff on that video and that, you know, that kind of thing and make it look better and stuff like that. Just keep that in mind that you, that basic stuff you know cut paste all that you know all that works in every editor it's just where's it at that's true does that does that make sense if you learn the basics you can apply it throughout mm -hmm. it's the same way with programming programming languages you know i know how to do stuff learned in COBOL, and i could do it in javascript c plus plus php you know you know uh, visual base i did have a visual basic class but it's the same how to use variables and and arrays and functions and that kind of stuff it's just how is the language different so to speak but mm -hmm. i hope that helps yep and desmond thunder says that they agree <clears throat> uh it's better to have software that's usable so right. things that you can figure out you want to focus on putting Which one out do you like best yeah what you what in your creativity you're using that side of your brain what is that side of your brain right or left you're the science person <laughs> But when you're using that brain, you don't want to have to stop on the other side and say, okay, where's that button? But why, why I bring it up and we started this conversation is that jittery thing. You know, I was getting depressed, folks. I'm, I'm telling you, there's so many nights that I just want to come on and just talk with you guys because I'm like getting depressed and Mary Ann's like sleeping. But... This past summer, you guys have been following us. You know we spent a week in Gettysburg, and we went to almost 70 different locations, and our goal was to get B-roll. And most of that footage is shaky. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm like, did we just waste a week of our life and have to go back and do this all again? What am I going to do? I mean, I can't, as our channel and our videos progress, you know, am I going to go back? And I found out what I'm excited about is Premiere has that filter, the warp filter. So I can't wait till you guys see the video from Thursday. It looks, there's a couple little glitches in there that I can't get so, out. I'm going to let it go. But. So are you going to, in the, uh, what is that thing? The one that isn't on here. That Virtual you're Ghost Hunt? No, the one you're trying to get people to go over to. Patreon? Yes. Are you going to put the original and then the... I could do that. So if you guys follow how, us on what, Patreon, I'll post the original f clip and one that's cleaned up, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's yeah. amazing yeah. that that's part of that software. And it's called a warp filter. So if I could get a warp filter for Corel Video Studio, oh, that would be awesome. I'm sure it's out there. It just might be named something different. Mm -hmm. But warping. And there you go. It gets back to that terminology. That What that means is it gets rid of shaky old man hands <laughs> uh yeah i'll drop them both out there so like here's before and after with the warp yeah and show them the uh because you where saw to it find it's the huge, yeah it, isn't it? yeah it's a it's a big difference yeah <clears throat> and then you can show them where the button is or whatever in uh your little video and so you're saying out. i should do like a tech, tutorial tech tutorials on all right let me ask you guys that if i get into like making tech tutorial type videos how do you grow your twitter followers how do you get more followers on facebook how do you use twitter to get more subscribers more for you. well if i get bored in insomnia i can make those <laughs> but i'm not going to put them on panic d and make them live i'll put them on our secondary channel unlisted and put them to our followers it don't have to be paid but our public followers on our patreon page okay. would that get you guys to go over to follow our patreon page day zombified Ooh. says too much work and Rick Johnson says video stabilization. So maybe they have that already in there called that. What video do you use, Rich? Rick. Rick. Rick Johnson. What software do you use? Man, it, why do I get so hot? I have no I idea. I am like sweating. I'm like between you and the computers in this area. Wait, it's got to be. Are you saying degrees. I'm hot? No, you're just blocking the airflow. Oh. <sighs> See here, Gemma says talking about equipment, and I finally got a tripod. That's awesome. That's awesome, Gemma. 
That's awesome. Definitely, definitely want a tripod. I know, right, Desmond? Jeez. Oh, poor Marianne. Give me a break. She lives like a queen. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> poor Marianne. We're going to get off here. She's going to go curl up and go to sleep. That's probably pretty true. She'll say, servant, bring me a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> you should see how she treats me on the live stream. <laughs> Three steps means I better move quick. <laughs> oh my poor Marianne <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, funny oh. Uh, so Gemma says that uh, they use iMovie for filming and editing okay so iMovie is on the Mac Marianne loves Macs No, I I honestly, when I was a kid in school, we started using computers, and that's when Apple kind of came in and said, oh, yeah, we're going to help the schools. And all we'd learned uh, was Telly Turtle and, like, okay, push this, this, and this, and it'll move to the right, <laughs> you know. And they're like, oh, yay, so this is what computers are. But then when I was doing my student teaching, the school that I went to, they had all Macs. And I couldn't figure out how to get my, my, I had always used, you know, the other version. Um, and I had a, a, a floppy disk and I was like, how do I get my floppy disk back? And like, there was no button to push to get it back. And I'm like, you what the heck? Yes. And I'm like, but I don't want to throw it in the trash. I don't want to get rid of it. I need this information. And, and the kids da are Vinci. like, no. I think that's it. Da Vinci. I think that, <laughs> Rick, I think that's, uh, that's the one is Da Vinci. Is Da Vinci free? I think that's the one that everyone's talking about. Well, you play a happy couple on YouTube. D Zombify wants to know what's with the skeleton. Is it a prop or is it a religious thing? It's just our mascot. Who's asking that? D Zombified. Yeah, it's just this. Just Boris. He's just our. He's just our. All right, I'll tell you our... the story of the of of Boris. Okay, when we moved into this room, because when we started the channel, we actually were sitting out at our dining room table, and I said, "Okay, we're going to continue on with this uh, YouTube thing." So this room right here, uh, we have a three bedroom house, uh, and no kids. So this room was Marianne's dead thing room. We used to call it. So she's got skulls and. You know all kinds of sciencey stuff like here and one of the things that she had was boris a skeleton okay yeah so i said let's keep that and we'll make him a prop and then i put out on twitter to a lot of fans name him it was either going to be boris vincent or i forget what the other you know was. like boris call Car 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 yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. kind of thing so everyone said boris so we named boris so then when I started doing the ghost stories and folklores, those are the videos that we put out on Tuesday, um, I use a voice, and we say that that's Boris mm -hmm. doing those videos. So there's the story of Boris. Um, uh, Dzombified says that it is free, but Da Vinci has a steep learning curve. But it is free. I haven't free. played with it, but... I want to show you guys something. See if you guys know where this location is. I posted this in our Facebook group. And Happy Trails replied and nobody else did. So I need to get you guys in our Facebook group too. But anyways, check this out. Do you guys know where that's at or have you seen that before? Anyone have a clue? probably going he's just showing a picture of a tree timey says walking dead <laughs> buzz <laughs> not unless the walking dead was there but we've never seen the walking dead so maybe i shouldn't buzz her well any of you folks in here ghost adventures fans watch zach fagan and and uh those guys ghost adventures d zombified says they don't see anything Desmond's daughter says, nope, they don't know where that's at. All right. 
there was an episode of Ghost Adventures where they went to Gettysburg mm -hmm. and they did an investigation at a train garage, okay, where they work on the train engines. We've been to Gettysburg several times and we're constantly looking for that location. In that episode, they caught on their uh, thermal camera an, an apparition of a Confederate soldier walking through the woods. So I'm like, when we go to Gettysburg, one of my goals is to find that location where they were at. Okay? That's the location. Ghost Adventures shot right, right there. They shot their uh, episode where they <laughs> where they did that now it's private property so we couldn't go on there so we took a picture through the trees that sits right behind the general uh lee's, general lee's headquarters, headquarters in mm -hmm. gettysburg so at some point we're going to do a video about that and you guys just had a thing but that's one of the things i was trying to do to stimulate the community on our social media as i posted a picture any guys know where this is from and Maybe that was a little too hard. It was a hard one. It was, was a, a hard, hard one. one. It was a hard one. Actually, to be honest, at first, when I saw the picture, and, and I think I probably took the picture, <laughs> but when I saw you post it, I was like, where is that? And then when I read your statement that went with it that said it was someplace that you know we didn't go to because it was illegal, I'm like, oh, I know where it's at. Yeah. And I knew it then. So we tried three different years to find that place. We did, and we did and find we it. And we found it this past summer. <laughs> Timey says she's picturing us peeking through the trees. Uh, <laughs> and Budget Bushcraft says it's Zach's studio where they film everything. Yeah. <laughs> but Timey still says, thinks it's Walking Dead. So you know what? Again, we don't watch The Walking Dead. We've never, we're one of those two people in the world who haven't no. seen that yet. So. Not yet, but we will. We'll probably binge watch it once we get so, uh, it. Um, I can't really get So Francis, you, did you see that episode when they when the uh, Ghost Adventures were in uh, Gettysburg? You know what I'm talking about? Where you had the the thermal camera? So she knows what I'm talking about. All right, so we've got an hour and a half. We're in an hour and a half. Yes. We could wrap it up. We could. It's we we've, we've been on for an hour and a half. We're keeping these people tied up. That's right. They're probably going to want some dinner at some point. I do. <laughs> All right. So what do you think? Are you going to wrap it up? Yeah. All right. So next week on Panic D Paranormal History or Panic D Videos, which is the channel name, whichever one you want to call us. Doesn't matter. <laughs> we uh, answer to pretty much everything. Yeah. Uh, we got ghost stories and folklore about the Heinz History Museum. Some interesting stuff there. Senator John Hines, History Museum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's coming out Tuesday. Thursday, uh, we got a video about the Apollo 11. And Friday, we have a video uh, about the history and stuff of the building. And you done a history, historical society too as part of that? Uh, maybe a little bit. Yeah. And talk about our experiences, how we wasted two hours because we didn't have an SD card. <laughs> We're not going to go there. <laughs> Literally walked oh, around that town looking for man. one, and nobody in that town sells them. Nobody in that area had an SD card. I went to like 30 places. Nobody had them. They were like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, an SD card, you know. <laughs> like, oh, What's an SD card? Really? Yeah, I don't know. Young people. I think that we'll put that as part of Friday's video. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> all right folks hey we want to thank you very much for coming and, and joining us and uh having fun on saturday we'll be back next saturday at five o'clock we'll do it again all right sounds this, like a plan. this by the way was show number 40 so 40 weeks we've done this not in a row <laughs> but this is our 40th let's talk paranormal next week will be 41 all right pretty cool mm -hmm. that's a lot of a lot of saturdays a lot of shows. That's, That's right. a lot of sadness. That's right. We've got some lives coming up, like on location lives, mm -hmm. already booked and planned. It's going to be fun. So, alrighty. <laughs> Just before we go, Tyree says, make it an amazing day. Always enjoy your shows, even if I'm confused. <laughs> I'm sorry we confused you, Tyree. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, go ahead. I forget what I was going to say. You're oh. going to say good night. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, folks. Hey, until next time. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. Let us know if you like this video by hitting that thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified the next time there's a video from Panic D Video. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting. <laughs>